Welcome to AWS, AWS Wednesday at Stick Show. This is just a continuation of the previous video tutorial, AWS WAF versus SQL injection. This time, we will manage our AWS rules using rule groups. One of the advantages of rule groups is it can be reused. You can associate a rule group to multiple web ACL. Unlike the creation of own rules, you do this individually. You would create a custom rule over and over again, and it cannot be reused. After we create our rule groups and associate it to our web ACL, we will test another cross-site scripting, which is a type of injection attack. Okay, so let's create rule groups. So as you can see, we are here in our web ACL page. We only have one web ACL, our web policy. And uh, as we click this, we'll check the rules. Here are the rules we have currently. So we have six in total. What we want to do is we want to create a rule group so we can remove some of these. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove cross-site scripting protect. What else? This AWS manage rule SQLI rule set. I'm also gonna remove this and put it into a rule group. Now, how do we create rule groups? Well, first thing that we need to do is we'll click rule groups available here in our left pane. Click that. And as you can see, there are no rule groups found. That's why we're about to create one. So let's click create rule groups and we're going to name it injections there. Uh, optionally, we can add description and the region is Asia Pacific Singapore. No problem. I'm going to click next now. And uh, we need to change the capacity because it's very important to set the capacity that suits the number of rules that we will be adding. Uh, the number of capacity is maximum 5,000. Let's start with 100. Okay, so first thing is I'm going to click the first rule. So I'm going to name this cross-site scripting block. And uh, this type is regular rule. And then if our request matches the statement, so this default is okay, it's correct. And then inspect, we're going to inspect the body there. The content type is plain text. This is correct. Match type. Let's go to the bottom. It says attack match condition, of course, contains cross-site scripting injection attacks. Under text transformation, we will use HTML entity decode, URL decode, JS decode, and lowercase. There. Okay, oversized handling, we'll just select continue. The action is default block, that's okay. I'm gonna click add rule now. There you go. So we just added or created our first rule under this rule group. Next is, I will create another rule again. Um, I will name this SQLI underscore block. Okay, regular rule. If our request match the statement, correct, inspect what? This time we're gonna we're not gonna use body, but we're gonna use all query parameters. And under text transformation, we'll use the same HTML entity decode, URL decode, JS, and uh, lowercase. There. The action is the same. The default block. I'm gonna click add rule now. All right, I need to select match type. I forgot. Let's select contains SQL injection attacks. There. So the previous one, we select XSS injection attacks. Now, um, SQL injection attacks. Then let's click add rule. There. Now, as you can see, this will not be accepted because our capacity is a bit low. See, it says capacity must be greater or equal to 150. So let's just change this to... 200 okay and uh, what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna click next okay so we have this two rules the priority it doesn't really matter i'm gonna click next now 
I'm going to click create rule group. And there you go. We have now our first rule group, injections. Here's what I'm going to do. I will go back to our web ACL. Okay. And in our web poll, I, I can actually create a new web ACL, but I will just going to clean my existing web ACL, which is web poll. I'm going to click rules. And uh, this time I will add a rule that is a rule group. So I need to select the second one because ad managed rule groups, these are rule groups that is already ready. Okay. It's not customized. The second one is what we will select. Add my own rule groups, excuse me, add my own rules and rule groups. Now from the previous video, we've been adding own rules. This time we'll, we'll add rule group. So in our previous examples, we set this to rule builder. This time we're going to click, we're going to select rule builder, excuse me, rule group there. And uh, I'm going to name this injection protect there. Okay. And the rule group, it says here, rule group is a required field. I will just select the injection injections rule group that we created. Okay. And I'm going to click add rule now. There you go. Okay. As you can see, we have, well, let's click save first. There you go. So as you can see this injection protect, well, it's a rule under web ACL, but we created this rule and associated a rule group. Okay. This time it will be a little cleaner because we can remove some of the rules, uh, XSS protect and this one, it will ask manage rules, SQL, uh, SQLI rule set. Now the advantage of rule groups is that we can reuse the rule groups over and over again. So let's delete this first. I'm going to delete this, these two rules delete. Okay. So in total, we only have five rules. Now here's what I was talking about. If I create a new web ACL, I'm going to name this lock web attacks. Okay. So this will be our new web ACL name is invalid because it should be without spaces there. And uh, I'm going to click add rules. Now you see here, it says add rules. I can add my own rule groups and ru own rules and rule groups. And this is what we've been doing in the previous video, um, where if we're going to add the customized rule, we're going to do this over and over again, like manually, but for the rule groups, I will just select injections. I don't need to create this rule customization one by one over and over again. I just need to select rule groups injection. So I will just simply cancel this and use our existing web ACL web poll. Now let's test. So we'll go to our web application. Uh, via our application load balancer Stix ELB. And I'm going to click this icon, Stix show icon, and this will take us to the blog page. And as you can see, we still have this pop up um, where we have a message, are you okay, Buster Wolf? And here's what we're going to do. Um, I will do a cross site scripting attack again, but this time it will be a little more advanced because this is a uh, web defacement. We'll basically uh, add an image using cross site script. Okay. So it's still JavaScript based. Okay. Again, it's just a little more advanced. And uh, if I click submit, let's see what's going to happen. As you can see, it's still blocking this cross site scripting attack. So that's how we create and use AWS SWAF rule groups. So what do you think of rule groups? It's kind of boring, don't you think? In the next video, we'll go back to more web application hacking.